Hello, and welcome to this episode of Sticky Note Marketing. I am your host, Mary Zarnecki, and this is your source for expert advice on what is working now to improve your marketing and grow your business. And today I am super excited to bring a special guest to you, an expert in terms of design and branding and website efficiency. So Emily Foster is here today. She is the owner and lead designer at Emily Foster Creative based here in Portland. Welcome, Emily to the show. So happy to have you here. Hi, yes. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad I can be here today. Terrific. And I know we've got a lot to talk about today, but before we jump into all the goodies and golden nuggets, would you mind just introducing uh, yourself and your business, what you're working on now, what kind of clients you work with to our audience? Sure. So I've been a designer for about seven years and officially started my own business a year and a half ago. Um, With COVID, I was working in an experiential marketing agency and then was laid off and decided that I actually really enjoyed working with small businesses more. I still work with some big businesses sometimes, but um, primarily I work with small creative businesses. So photographers, wedding vendors, um, Etsy shop owners, and I help them with their brand strategy, branding, and web design and primarily work in um, Show It and Squarespace for their website design. Fantastic. I like that. So you you bring creativity to the creators. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I just love that industry. I think it's awesome because um, I think everyone kind of goes on the solopreneur or small business path because they have a passion and want the sense of freedom and balance that they might not get being a creative in a nine to five. But then you get so busy doing a hundred different things, running your business. So if I can help them at least outsource branding and web design and not have to think about their marketing as much, I think that can just be a huge relief for creative business owners who like really their zone of genius is what they should be charging clients for. Exactly. No, that's a total fair point. I'm sure there are a few people listening at least that have something that they decided they were great at, they wanted to do more of, they started a business around it. And maybe you're a little frustrated that they're having to spend a little too much time working on all those other things that come with running a business, right? The accounting and like you're saying, all of the marketing and branding. So when you're working with your clients or when you're starting to talk to business owners that you work with, what are some of the most frequently asked questions that you hear from them around how to get started? Yeah, there's all sorts of questions. So I think initially a lot of people seem to think that they just need a logo. So we often have conversations about what the difference between a logo and branding is, how branding is really your full visual identity. And that's what really is going to help move the needle in your business versus just an icon kind of logo that is just going to be plopped onto things. Um, So that's one thing that comes up, especially with new business owners. I think Um, it's like a business card. Like everyone thinks that they need one, but they aren't really sure what it means to have one and what kind of goal it's actually accomplishing um, or helping them reach. So that's one thing Um, with web design. It's also a matter of like, I think there's just all kinds of types of web designers out there. So there's some confusion sometimes about like, will my clients have control over their website after, which yes, they definitely will. Um, They have questions about like what kind of pages they should have and Uh, what kind of images should be featured and basically like how to best present themselves on their website. Um, And I think initially new business owners just need to get something up and have like a simple website, but then it kind of becomes a conversation about what should your website look like beyond that and how can it serve you more than just having like a template that exists in the world? (laughs) No, totally. And you mentioned something really important, which is it's not just being pretty, right? It actually is supposed to have a purpose. It's supposed to generate revenue for your business. Yes. Yeah. And I've noticed their spaces. Like, I guess what I've noticed with people who inquire that are newer in business, it's that they think they just need the logo on a website because that's what they hear. And then when you start to get booked out and I guess you start to experience more successes, but also more failures in your business and you kind of learn who you like to and don't like to work with. Mm -hmm. I think that's when people start to realize the importance of branding and like higher end web design, because something about the DIY version or the version that they got through a cheap designer isn't working for them. So I think their pain points come up more. Usually I would say like two to five years in business and it's when you know who you are a little bit better. And that's, I think, when people really value branding and web design. 
No, that's true. So if, if someone is thinking to themselves, yeah, that sounds like me. If I've done the DIY, I've got something out there, but I feel those growing pains. I feel like I'm getting to a new level. I'm leveling up. My business is, is growing. What are some of the questions if, if someone is at that level and they're interviewing or exploring working with a designer, what, what kind of questions should they be asking those folks that they're, they're talking to? Yeah, so they should definitely ask what kind of control they're going to have over their website, like logistics like that, um, because there are designers who make it really expensive and painful to continue getting website updates. Um, and then ask a good amount about the platform. I think it's great to find a professional web designer. Um, they'll know what they're doing, but just kind of make sure you understand what you're getting into with your website host and your domain and everything. Um, and then making sure that you ask about kind of the style that they work with and they don't necessarily have to have experience with the specific type of business that you are to give you successful and effective branding and web design. Um, but asking about like if they understand the kind of problem that you're experiencing, if they have ideas about how the branding and web design could help solve that problem. Um, I think the difference between just hiring any designer who can make something look pretty and then hiring a designer who can really help you get to the next level is that initial sales call. Like, some designers don't do a sales call to start. So that's a question to ask if you can have a conversation first before putting any money down. And then during that call, like what is the conversation like? Like, are you talking more about your business and your problems? Or are you just kind of talking about colors and fonts? Because that's not going to get you as far as you need for that ladder. I like what you say about that, you know, that, okay, are they tuned into really what this is supposed to do for your business, that this is really a, a, a tool that you're going to use to drive that growth. So how can a website do that, right? I mean, I've seen plenty of pretty websites. I've seen ones that don't look so great, but actually do generate leads. So what really does make a strategic website in your opinion? Yeah, so I think it's multiple components. It is how pretty it is and how well designed it is. And then it is the other things on the website like copy and SEO. And that kind of will help determine the traffic that you're getting first to your website. And then good effective copy that sells will help determine how well you convert people once they get to your website. Um, so it's a mix of those, including imagery and the branding that you bring into your website. Um, and then beyond that, I think we've talked about this before, is like the marketing that you do after your website is created. So it's not always up to just the website team, like your designer and copywriter and photographer, it's all, or your SEO expert. It's also up to you and your, if you hire a marketing team or someone to help you with Instagram and Facebook and other promotions to drive traffic that way too. Um, and that looks different for everyone. I've seen business owners who have a really effective strategic website because they've invested in SEO and worked with SEO experts. So Google is where they get most of their leads. Um, and then other people kind of go viral regularly on TikTok or Instagram, and that's how they get leads to their website. Um, and then either way, once people are on your website, it does need to be well-designed. Um, you need to have worked with a strategist of some sort to think about what is the flow like when people get to your website. Um, so thinking through like what page should people land on and then what should the end page be that they're leaving, which is usually like the contact or the shop page for e-commerce businesses. Um, and then, so basically I always go through the strategy first and then, and then we talk about design. There's never really a conversation about colors and fonts up front. Um, if we do branding up front, then we of course pick those, but it's not like we're spending a lot of time going back and forth about colors and fonts. It's more about the strategy and how we're solving problems on the website. Um, so that's one thing, especially when it's client facing, those are the kinds of um, things that you can implement to have a really effective website. But then there's also so much to make it convenient for yourself. So you can have schedulers. Um, I've seen some of my clients have been wedding venues and they put like an inventory kind of page on their website. So their couples that book weddings at their venue can choose what um, items they want for their wedding. And that kind of saves them a ton of time from having to do that in person. So there's all kinds of hacks and things that can also make running your business easier by putting that on your website. I love that. And, and that's one benefit of working with an expert. You know, even as a marketer, I love working with experts in, in different areas because you know things like that. You know the hacks or that, well, there's this one thing you could do. And sometimes I might be able to articulate the use case. I, I really wish I had something that could do this thing, but I might not know what that thing 
what the actual tool is. And so I think that's a really important part of, of going to an expert when you have the ability to consult someone who's really doing this day in and day out. Yeah, I think that's why the initial conversation is so important too, to talk about what your business's problems are, because if you don't really know what your problems are, then it will be too hard to discuss it with your designer or your copywriter, or your brand strategist, and you're not really going to get anywhere. You're just kind of going to be throwing money away. So I think it's important to understand you don't need to have the answers for anything, but just know what your pain points are to start. No, definitely. And this is why I love, you know, connecting with, with designers and copywriters, because as a strategist, you know, what I, what I usually do when I'm working with my clients is the inputs, right? Do you know your target? Do you understand them? What's meaningful to them? What's your benefit promise? All of that. And what's that journey look like? Like you were saying, where are they going to find you? And then how are you going to get them to your website? So I love that, you know, one of the things you're able to bring to the table is this question, right? Have you gotten clarity on your target? Because we shouldn't really be building a home base for them unless we really know who we're bringing into this home. <laughs> Yeah, I agree. And yeah, I mean, there's so many different levels too. I've been working in my own business on offering different packages where our conversation is what I think is most important for a website, but mm -hmm. I realize that's not always possible, both in terms of time and financial budgets for new business owners. So also thinking about, okay, how could we just start you with a template or something that is more so pretty, but still strategic and will help you get conversions before you can really dive deep into your strategy. I love that. That starting point, that minimum viable, this is, this is going to get you kicked off, right? So start simple, start somewhere. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of think that's the, the big, like the big mantra of running a business. <laughs> exactly. No, I love that. So when you're working with clients that have kind of been your favorite clients, what is it that you would say they have prepared to bring to those conversations? Like you were saying, are they able to articulate a specific problem they're experiencing with their existing website? What is it that they're bringing to you that actually enables you to do your best work? Yeah, so they usually do have a good grasp of their target audience and their ideal client. Um, they've either been in business long enough to know that, or maybe I have a lot of clients because it's the creative industry. They've like worked in a nine to five. So maybe through their employer, they've kind of seen the red flag clients that they don't want and then the ideal clients. Um, so they have a good grasp of that. Um, they are confident in their services and their pricing. So they have a good product or service to back up. Um, like we kind of talked about earlier, if you have a great web design and branding and strategy, that's great. But then how do you continue to be successful with that? And a lot of times that's having a good service or product to put the branding on. Um, so that's another thing. And then basically kind of knowing what they want. Like they don't, um, I, most of my clients don't know what they want design wise when they come to me, but they do have because of the target audience and because of their product and service and industry, they kind of know the direction that they want to go in, which is super helpful because it's a really collaborative process. Like um, it's kind of like somewhere in the middle, I think being a professional designer, like you don't want to be a pixel pusher and work with a client who like already 100% knows everything they want and wants to tell you exactly where to put everything on the website and in the logo. Um, but you also don't want to work with someone who doesn't know themselves well enough to be able to even give you a sense of direction or when you show something, then they don't even exactly know if it works well for them. So kind of somewhere in the middle of like, knowing what you want design wise and in the direction, um, but still being open to exploring and collaborating to find what actually might be best because it might not always be what you think. No, I, I, it's a really important point, that fine line between standing in what you know and what you're bringing to the table and then trusting the mm -hmm. expert that you're hiring, right? That's why, <laughs> that's why we're bringing, bringing that expert in. That's perfect. Yeah. And then in terms of personality, I think my favorite clients are those types that are collaborative and friendly and just, I think most of us get along with friendly, collaborative people, but um, I think people who understand that we're partners in the process and that I don't have to tell them what to do. Like um, just because I'm the expert doesn't mean that I always have the right answers. They do know their business well. So it's kind of me trusting them that they know their business, but then also the client trusting me that I know my expertise enough to help them. That's fantastic. 
Well, I really appreciate you being here today. And I know one of the things I always encourage people to do is make sure that they have their sticky notes and their pens ready to go and make sure they're taking notes. I'm sure they've got plenty of notes from the tips that you've shared, the questions to ask their designer. As one last parting thought, if you are going to give someone a go to your website right now, and if it's missing this thing, add it. Is there one thing that you see being left out or not being included or not being addressed on way too many websites these days? Yes, I would say a linked phone number or a linked email in your footer. So I think it's kind of default where we now, um, and if it makes sense, maybe the header of your business, but it doesn't need to look super salesy, but people should just be able to scroll really quickly down to your footer and then be able to click on an email address and send an email from their phone. Um, because that is so rare, actually, <laughs> like, uh, I've been not that this is the prime example of a business, but I've been doing a lot with the IRS lately and you can't do that on those kinds of websites, like those massive websites. So for small or large businesses, it's important that people can contact you fast. Exactly. Don't make it hard for people to work with you. Yes. <laughs> Don't be like the IRS. <laughs> exactly. No, that's a good tip. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Emily. I hope all of you listening got those sticky notes out. We're taking notes. If not, make sure to re-listen to the episode. And Emily, I know you also said that you had a uh, gift that you wanted to give to the community today. Yes, I think we were talking about VIP days. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted to offer 25% off of that. Um, I can't remember if we came up with a code, but yeah, um, so we'll drop the code in, in the, in the show notes, but Tell us a little bit about what is that uh, VIP design day? How does that work? Yeah, so I either do branding or website for you in a day, and we do a little upfront work to make sure that we can actually get a full brand, a full mini brand or a full website done. So for the branding, it usually looks like a primary logo, a couple secondary logos, colors and fonts, and then like a mini brand guide to get you started. So if you haven't worked with a professional designer before, but you're looking for something that isn't super, super expensive, um, then that could be a good kickstart for you. And we do dive into your strategy a little bit up front too. Um, so that way it's still a very strategic branding. Um, and then for the website design, it's up to five pages, usually designed in Show It or Squarespace, um, mobile and desktop friendly. And then we can customize it a little bit too to your branding. So you still get a semi-custom website, but it started from a template and just a little bit of a smaller website to be able to complete it in a day. Fantastic. I love that. So if you are listening and you are a new business owner and you've never gotten a professional looking at your brand, looking at your branding, this VIP design day can help you if you're just starting out. And it also sounds like if you're ready for that refresh, this might be a great opportunity to get your expert eyes onto their branding. Yes. Yeah. And it, it is perfect for a refresh too. Um, and we can also address different deliverables. Like sometimes clients come to me and they're like, I love my logo, but I feel like I don't have any other branding. So we can work on things like patterns and icons during that day. It really is just a day dedicated to you and your goals. And so we kind of work up a laundry list of tasks that make sense for your business. Fantastic. I love it. So if you are ready to get expert eyes, Emily's expert eyes on your brand and your business, definitely take advantage. We'll make sure to include that code and that link here in the, in the show notes. Well, thank you, Emily, so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing your knowledge and expertise with our community. Thank you for having me. This was a lot of fun. Thank you so much. <laughs> Terrific. Well, if you are joining us for the first time, welcome to Sticky Note Marketing. Join us again. Tune in because I have a few more experts coming your way to share their expertise, their experience, and their insights to help you with your marketing. Make sure it's optimized. Make sure it's working to the best of its ability so that you can grow, scale, and thrive coming up in this new year. So looking forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Uh, Mary Zarnecki signing off, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.